Can we say that we are seeing these, this story get to some sort of a bottoming out for these companies? Certainly, we've seen a vast disparity between the price action of the companies and the fundamentals, where we're at, in the case of, say, Tencent, which will be reporting earnings later, later on today, Asia time, it's two standard deviations off of its historical five-year averages. So I think we, we have the market is really baked in worst-case scenarios, a delisting of the U.S. ADRs, continued China internet regulation, and a decrease in U.S. and China relationships. So as we've had the, the sum of all fears baked into the price of these securities. So if you want to sort of pick when it comes to growth prospects and recovery prospects and relatively, uh, I guess, companies that have been relatively shielded or at least through the worst of the regulatory crackdown, what are you liking at the moment? Well, in terms of, I mean, we we're, we take a basket approach at Cray, Crane Shares, where our, you know our KWeb, our China Internet ETF, has really become the kind of gold standard for the space. So, so we do like the basket approach. At the same time, when you look at the leaders in the space, the Alibabas and Ten Cents, uh, when you recognize how far disconnected from their fundamentals they've become. It's one of these situations where you do almost have to stick your head in the sand and buy. And certainly, Alibaba's move to vastly increased their share buyback program, not only shows the confidence of management in the company's prospects, it's also an indication that they're willing to put the money to work, which we can imply as an indication that the worst of the Chinese internet regulatory cycle is behind us. Okay, uh, and it seems sort of obvious that it is, given things that the government has said recently, but you can't help but ask, hmm, there's a war in Ukraine, there's the Fed tightening, there's the Chinese uh, government worrying about meeting its growth target, which is a lot slower than it used to be. Could it be that this is just, oh, we better patch this up for now, and at some point in the future we'll resume our pullback? Or can we really, really believe that the Chinese government, in some sense, quote-unquote, learned its lesson? I think Vice Premier Liu He's statement is, was said with a lot of conviction uh, we saw that re that message reiterated on the CSRC's website from the PBOC. So it, it's I think it is an indication that a message has been delivered from the top the upper echelon of China's government that the imp way this regulatory cycle was implemented, uh, maybe maybe that pendulum went too far, as well as they addressed other concerns in terms of the slowing macro picture in China, as well as the situation in real estate. So, so I agree, there are, there are other factors that play the value growth rotation, uh, higher rates here in the U.S., but I, I, think, I think these three main culprits, holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, the Chinese internet regulation, and the U.S.-China diplomatic situation, the worst case worst case outcome for all three of those silos was baked into these names. And we're starting to see those probabilities change in a positive fashion. So, Brendan, what do you say to all the U.S. investors who have said China is uninvestable? And if it is, which of your many ETFs would you suggest? Well, I think, I think the way most foreign investors have looked at China is really between the U.S. and Hong Kong shares. And, and over the last, you know, almost a year and a half, that, that area has been a very difficult place to invest. At the same time, we can contrast that with what investors in China think about China's economy and capital markets. So, so certainly the Shanghai and Shenzhen returned 9 and 11 percent last year versus a down 13 percent for the Hang Seng, almost 50 percent for KWEB. So, so I think there is this disparity between what the Chinese think about China and what foreign investors think about China. And that's why we've always recommended trying to blend the two, because they do, they do disconnect like we've seen over the last year. But I think, it's, I think the foreign sentiment is, is starting to uptick. How much does COVID zero weigh on these companies, Brendan? Does the domestic growth story concern you when it comes to what levels of growth we might expect in the coming years? I think over the last two years, China's economy has been driven by it being the world's factory. That export-driven manufacturing has kept China's GDP um, in a very, very strong place from kind of a relative perspective. Over the next year, as we see global tightening, as we see global stimulus pulled back, that's going to invariably slow that export engine, which means domestic consumption has to take up the slack. So I think a loosening of COVID policy should help 
unleash domestic consumption in China. And again, that domestic consumption occurs through the companies we hold in KWEB.